after learning the laws of vector additions now let's try to understand resolution of vector to understand resolution of vector uh, i want to go with a simple example uh, let's say i have a, a ball here all right this is my ball here and what i'm going to do i'm going to hit that ball at the corner let's say with the force f1 i applied here force f1 and then definitely as just like in a carom board or in snooker or in football i mean soccer ball this will try to swing like this it will turn like this all right and what i'm going to do next time i'm supposing if i'm applying a uh, i'm applying a force let's say f2 right and again in the corner right if i'm applying the force let's say f2 in the corner then this will also try to swing that ball something like this all right and now you imagine what happens when we are applying this force F1 and F2 together at one time, at single time, two forces we are putting, all right? So that time the, the ball will try to swing like this also and it will try to swing like this also. But the motion of the ball will be along the middle of this because one is hitting this ball along this and another is hitting the ball along this. And that time, you know, force is being hidden towards this also and towards that also. So the ball will go in the middle of that. All right, you can do the same experiment in your home uh, or, or you can do one thing. You can take a rectangular table if you have in your house and you can put certain object, let's say here a box or something at the corner. You try to apply the force here also and try to apply the force here also. All right, then you will see that the, that the ball is moving towards this or simply you take a book, you put it a book here, all right. Uh, with one finger you hit towards this, with another finger you hit towards this side. Then you'll see that the book is moving along this. It's not moving towards this or neither it is moving towards this. The bo this, this book, you know, this book will move along this. So why I'm giving this these two, three examples? Because, you know, this is exactly the resolution of vector. Applying one force directly towards this is same like applying one force towards this and another force towards this at the same time. So... So if I'm making this a little straight, then it is something like this, all right? The book was like this, the book was like this. And if I'm directly applying a force, force is also a vector quantity. If I'm applying directly a force along this side, let's say this is F, then the definitely the book will move along this. But instead of doing so, if I'm ap applying the force to this book, one along this side and another along this side, at the same time, then also the bo book will move along this side you know one force being hidden this side so book will try to move like this and another force at the same time is hitting towards this the so ball will try to move like this and that time the 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 resultant of these two the net force acting uh, these two force acting at one time that's why the book will try to move along this all right so here the resolution we need to understand that the process of splitting one vector into the two equivalent components here we are learning 2D, that's why I'm telling you we are two components, all right? So splitting of a one vector into the two equivalent vectors is called the resolution of vector, all right? But you can resolve in two or more than two, all right? That's the real definition if you go. The, it's a process of splitting of a vector into the two or more than two parts or vectors or components are uh, is called the resolution of vector, all right? And one thing, after the splitting up, you know, after the splitting up, you'll get these two, two parts, you know? Let's say this is F force, then if you apply here F1 and if you apply F2, then the force, this force F1 and F2 is actually same like the F. In that time, this F1 and F2, those two perpendicularly acting two uh, parts are called component of the component, are called component of force F or component of vector F. Or sometimes we say rectangular component also because there is 90 degree between them. All right. So resolution of vector is, you know, now you understand something like this. Uh, if I have a vector, let's say, if I have a vector uh, R, all right, and then if I'm trying to split this vector into the two equivalent vectors, if I'm trying to resolve that vector R, then it means I'm going to split this vector into the two equivalent vectors, which are mutually perpendicular to each other. Keep in mind, always the resolved parts, the component must be mutually perpendicular. So one will be along this, and another will be perpendicular to this, all right, if this is... 90 degree all right let's say this is angle theta so our one component will be along this and another component will be along this so it is better to understand with taking graph you know uh, in the in the coordinate axis you can say let's say this is x-axis and let's say this is our y-axis all right and this is our origin so one along the x-axis that is also known as x component and one along the y-axis that is called y component all right because the angle between the x-axis and y-axis is 90 degree 
And now what is the magnitude of the x component and what is the magnitude of the y component? All right, so for that we need to do a little construction. Let me let me let me draw perpendicular here and similarly perpendicular here. All right, so uh, let me give the name first: a, b, and this is c. Uh, now this is ninety degree. This is ninety degree. You know, and these are parallels. So this is just like a rectangle. You know, so in rectangle the opposite side are in the same direction and are equal in magnitude. So this r y can be written here also. Right, because both have the same direction and the same angle. All right, this is R Y and this is R X. And now in triangle, if you see triangle O A B, it's a right angle triangle. And in the right triangle O A B, now we're going to find out the magnitude of the X component and magnitude of the Y component. All right. So I'm writing here sine of the theta. Why I'm taking sine of the theta? Because sine of the theta is actually the perpendicular over the hypotenuse. And the perpendicular here, if you see, that's A B. And hypotenuse here is OB. Okay. And it's sine theta. And we're watching very clearly that AB is represented by the uh, Y component of that vector R. So it's RY. And OB is representing the magnitude of the main original vector R. All right. So further, what we are getting here, we're getting our RY equals to R times sine theta. All right. So this RY is R times sine theta or you can say this is equals to r sine theta we find out our y component and now let's try to find out the x component x component is represented by here this side this is the base of this right angle triangle and this is the hypotenuse so let's take the cosine of angle because cosine represents the base over the hypotenuse all right so that's o a over this is o all right o a over o b and that's cosine of theta is equals to o a is here representing the x component that is r x and OB is representing here the resultant R, means the original vector. So again, what I can say that X component is R times cosine of theta. So this is equals to R times cosine of theta. So here we split it the one vector, one vector into the two components, R cos theta and R sine theta. All right. So R sine theta, sine theta is always along the Y axis and cos theta is always along the X axis. So similarly, let's try to do now. Let's try to analyze uh, the same problem with a certain force. Let's say I have here, let's say five Newton force. All right, New force is a vector quantity and acting along this. And let me give the direction of this by making the axis. Okay, this is my x-axis and this is my y-axis. Let's say this vector is uh, acting along the th uh, 30 degree, uh, by making 30 degree with the positive x-axis. And now I want to write the equivalent vectors of this five Newton. I want to resolve this five Newton force into the two mutually perpendicular vectors all right so one will be along the x-axis another will be along the y-axis and x-axis is represented by r cos theta that means 5 newton and cos theta theta is actually 30 newton and here again that is r y that is along y-axis that is r sine theta that is 5 newton into sine theta that is sine 30 degree okay so here 5 newton as it is and cos 30 is actually root 3 over 2 and sine 30 is 1 over 2 that's 5 newton so finally uh, applying 5 newton force along this uh, by making 30 degree angle is same as applying at the same time two forces one along x-axis and one along y-axis and the magnitude of those, those forces along x-axis should be you know force of force along x-axis should be uh, 5 times 3 that is 5 root 3 over 2 newton and one force along 5 by 2 that's 2.5 newton 2.5 newton so if i'm applying 2.5 newton force along y axis and uh, 5 root 3 over 2 newton force along x axis at one time then that will give me the resultant force which is 5 newton along the 30 degree of the x axis all right so this is what the resolution of vector you know one vector has been split into the two mutually perpendicular vectors which is finally equivalent to the 5 newton and one thing always keep in mind whenever you are going to sum up all the vectors you know whenever you are going to sum up this uh, components vectors or rectangular components of original vector that will give you always the original vector all right so if you if you if you if you apply here triangle law let's say this is this is one side of the triangle this is another side of the triangle and both are uh, same you know same direction so i can do like this also all right let's say this is o a b so that time if you see you know in the triangle law what we had learned then if we if we represent two vectors by the two adjacent sides of the triangle taken in same order i mean same order that is ob plus 
BA then the resultant of these two is given by the third side of the triangle taken in reverse order so reverse order these are going towards this this is going towards this that's actually OA and what is this OB OB is actually our X component and BA is actually our this RY RY and RY that is our Y component you know Y component and that is giving OA is represented by the resultant you know the main resultant R so here you need to keep in mind if you add the x component of that vector with y component of that vector then you'll get the original vector if we had the 3d then we'll be adding the z component also rz also but we're learning here 2d first and then we'll later learn the 3d all right i hope you understand and if you have any questions regarding this then please feel free to comment below this video and don't forget to subscribe the channel